Hello and welcome to the second video in the Rector series. So today what we're going to be covering is how to generate your own rules using Rector. So let's just jump right in. So we'll be continuing on using the same project we were using before, um, which has very little in it. Uh, there's just a product uh, entity class and a product repository. So uh, what we need to do is we need to go into the vendor folder. Uh, we need to type in Rector. And if we go inside of here, we will find this Rector recipe .php .dist file. And this is the file we need, okay? So what we can do is just right click and copy the file. And then in the root directory, we can paste it. And when we're pasting it, we need to remove the dist part of the file name. Okay, so now we can add it. Uh, so now we should have the rector.php config file and also rector recipe.php. Okay, so let's have a look in this file. Let's see what, see what's going on. Right, so essentially it's defining some stuff, right? Um, but all we really need to know is what this is going to do. So what it's going to do is it we will use a command um, which would be vendor vendor bin uh, rector generate. I won't click enter right now because it will. If I click enter, it would generate based on this file a rector rule. Um, but we need to configure this file first. So here we can see we can define a name. So let's say, for example, in the entity class that we have, we want to add in um, some sort of annotation. Let's say we want to add in um, an API resource uh, annotation, um, but we can't be bothered to do it by hand. So we want to do it in an automated manner. Now, let's say you have lots of, of uh, entities and it would take a long time. Um, so we can do this using Rector. So let's uh, change the name. We will call it add um, API resource annotation rector. Um, excellent, okay. And then we will just define in here. We'll get back to this line. We'll just define in here what it does. Um, it will add an API resource annotation to the to an entity class. Okay. So now we have a, a description and we have a name. So at the moment we have here method call on line 21 and this is defining what node will be available inside of the rector rule. And generally speaking you want to keep it to closest to the node that you're actually modifying. So for example if you're mod modifying properties um, then you probably want to use the property node. And when pulling it in be sure to use the PHP parser. If we wanted to add in extends to a class, then we would say class. And because class is a reserved keyword, we also use the underscore here. Um, but you'd have to hunt around to find where the PHP parser node statement is, like so. And then we could replace it with a qualifier. 
So this would get the class node, which would be available inside of the rector rule that we would generate using this file. Now what we have down here is we have two bits of PHP. And this is where we can define what would happen in, an, in you know, when we run the rule. Okay, so for example, this, this rule, we're adding an API resource annotation. So um, we are going to be changing the class. Um, so therefore we just need the class. If we just copy this, it'll be easier. Go back there paste it in, tidy up. Okay, so let's say we'll use this one in the top one because that's the current state of the class, right? So now down here, we'll add in the at API resource annotation like so. So this is, if we just remove this function. Okay, so this is what would happen if the if the rule ran uh, correctly and successfully. It would take this class and it would add in an API resource into the annotation. Excellent. Okay, so now if we continue down here, we can see there's lots of different things and there's lots of comments. Really, we don't need to know what any of that does right now. All we're doing is creating a very basic example of how we can create our own rules. Okay, so now if we go back to the command line and we hit enter on that command vendor bin rector generate, let's see what happens. So here we can see that it's asking us if we, if uh, rector should update the composer JSON with the auto load uh, rector namespace. Uh, by default, it'll be yes. So just hit enter, and there we go. We now have generated it. Um, it's told us that uh, new files were generated for uh, the rule we just uh, defined. So let's see what's what's happened. If we close that. There we go. We can see that a new utils uh, directory has been created. And inside of it, we have a rector, then we have a source and we have a test. Um, the source has rector inside of it. And then there's a class. And this is coming from the fact that we defined the node as class. So if we created more than one, it would pop them all in here. And then inside of that, it's created this file for us. So let's have a look what's going on inside of here. Um, so we can see it's getting a definition, which, okay, great. <laughs> um, we can see that it's got the definition that we added in. Fantastic. Aha, here we are. So we can see that snippet of code um, that we created. Um, and it's got both of them. It's got the first one and then the second one is the output. So this would be a potential input and then this would be the potential output. And then down here, it's it's got a function called get node types. And aha, here we can see it is getting the class node and it's returning that. Excellent, okay, so then down here, this is the main function that we need to care about. This is where the magic is happening. This is where we're, we're changing the code, okay? But we'll get we'll, more on that later. Let's, let's now have a look at the test directory and see what's going on in there. So we've got the same structure um, and then we've got this add API resource annotation rector and then it's got a fixture. So let's have a look at this fixture. Oh, okay, so we see here we've got the same code that we created and it's created a test for us. It's created you know, the, the input and then the output. And if we click on the test here, so this is the fixture of the test and then this is the actual test, we can see that it's generated something for us. And if we scroll down in the command line, we can see here it says, make tests green again. And it's given us this string. 
And this is the string we can run to run the test, um, this test here, the uh, API resource annotation rector test. So let's just paste it in and run it. Okay, so we've ran it and it's given us this message here saying no such file or directory vendor bin PHP unit exists. And this is because obviously I have an installed PHP unit. Um, so if I just do that quickly, and we can do this by just saying composer require PHP unit, enter. Okay, so we can see that PHP unit's now been installed. So if we just go ahead and try and run that command again, let's see what happens. Okay, so we're getting a different response already. It's telling us that PHP unit 9.3.11 is now running and let's see what happens Aha. okay excellent let's see we can see that it's given us some result here it's saying that something is running um, and it's told us that there's been one test three assertions and one failure and we can see here we actually have a, a diff where we can see what's happening um, and what's expected and what's actual. So of course the rule isn't actually doing anything yet. In the interest of saving time, um, I'll just paste in some code that I prepared earlier and we'll go through it, we'll break it down. Okay, so let's just include this here and we'll import the class, okay. So let's start here on line 66. What we can see is we're defining um, that this is a object of PHP doc info. And this is how we can get the, um, the doc comment from the node. So if we just dump this for a second, let's just see what's, what's, what's inside of this. Right, what is it essentially? So if we hit enter, uh, we're running the test again. Um, this dumping and dying is very useful uh, when writing rector rules. It's what enables us to see what's inside the node and what's going on. And it's basically just dumped what was available in the PHP doc info. Uh, object and if you're wondering where this is coming from it's coming from the fixture that was in the utils rector test rector class add api resource annotation tests and then inside of this fixture we have the fixture dot php dot inc and that's what's been passed we can see the annotation is in here under comments attribute comments. Excellent. So we know that it's now passing the correct code and we can now modify it. Okay, so if we remove that dump and we'll see what the next line is doing. So here we can see if the PHP doc info has by name API resource, then return null because we can see the return type here is indeed either null or type node. So that will essentially mean if the, if the class has that annotation, it will skip it essentially. And that's what the comment is telling us here. And then finally, on the last line, um, we can say, um, we'll add in this tag um, by using this method called add bear tag. Okay, so let's, See what happens if I run the test now. Okay. So we can see that something has changed in the in the diff. We can see that it's adding some stuff, but there's some issue with spacing, it would seem. And so if we just go to the fixture, and what we can do is we'll just fix this spacing, like so. And we'll do the same at the top. 
in the input like that. Okay, make sure it's saved and we'll run the test again. And we can see it's still failing, but we can see that the diff has now changed. And let's see what's going on. It seems like it's again just some sort of spacing issue. If we remove that and remove that. Yes, it would seem that it's because of the space in the class. Okay, now if we go, fingers crossed, it should now pass. And indeed, we can see the test is now passing. So this means that the code is working as expected. But before we continue, I just want to go back to the rect class and show you what this node now looks like. So what we can do is on line 77, we'll just say uh, dump, but we'll add something in. We'll say this print and we'll add in the node in here. And then we'll just say die after that. So now what this is going to do, this is going to print it in a, in a, a way that tells us what the node actually looks like at the end of, of this function and it should print it nicely when we run the test. Okay, that was quick. And here we go. We can see that it's output this string here. And we can see that it's also added in this API resource, which is fantastic. Excellent. So this would now seemingly would now work based on on this output. But this is a very useful way of seeing what the node looks like. So we'll just remove that like so. Okay, so now let's use this, right? So we've created this rector rule. Now we need to use it. So how can we do this? We can go into the rector.php config file. And inside here, we're defining property, typed property rector, which we no longer need because if you watched the last tutorial, you'll know that this has already been applied to the code. So we can change this. We can change it to add API resource annotation rector. And we can get rid of, we can replace it with a qualifier like so. And that's that. Right, so now we can actually run rector again. If we go to If we write in vendor bin rector and then process, so again, this is going to run based on our configuration file rector.php. It'll run in the source directory, and it will have code quality, the code quality set applied, and it will also have our new rule, add API resource annotation rector applied to it. Okay, so Rector has run. Now let's see what it's changed. And we can see here already in the diff result of the of the uh, command line, we can see that it's added in the API resource. Um, so let's see where it's added it. It's also added it in the kernel.php, um, which obviously we wouldn't want to happen <laughs> because it's not an entity. So that's how we could improve this um, this rule. And we can see here in the product class, we have indeed added that API resource annotation. Excellent. So this rule could be tweaked to make it better um, so that it didn't change other files as well. But for now, it's fine. It shows you the process of how to create your own rule. So that is how it's done. And as always, happy coding.